Our 21st century online environment has revolutionized the way information spreads. Blogs, social media platforms, and video sharing sites have led to an explosion of internet personalities, entertainment bloggers, and citizen journalists who are reaching more people faster than ever before. Today, one Facebook post can reach more people across more countries in less time than nearly any other form of communication. Health experts, however, have witnessed a downside to today's internet practices. Since 8 out of 10 internet users seek health information and conversations online, including across social media sites, public health experts are striving to better understand how today's internet culture may be influencing health behaviors in unhealthy ways. How is modern information spread affecting their choices? The field of public health, which is tasked with controlling global disease epidemics, is now up against a new threat, digital pandemics, the far-reaching, rapid spread of scientifically inaccurate, unrestricted health information across the internet through social networks. With so much information being spread around on social media, how can we possibly keep track? How do we ensure the right messages are getting to the right people? And what can we do when this is not the case? These questions set the foundation for our research. On a Friday night in the winter of 2014, a problematic article was released suggesting fluoride as a newly identified developmental toxin in children. Within a matter of hours from its release, the article created a flood of posts on Twitter and was covered in popular media news stories across the internet, generating tens of thousands of views and shares over social media by the end of the weekend, all telling a story about fluoride, the new threat to normal child development. Concerned about the unfolding of this misrepresented story, we began to track the spread of the article and its content online. We then mapped these conversations into different clusters or communities and looked for patterns. The mapping of these social conversations began to illuminate how online behavior might be influencing offline attitudes about important public health interventions like vaccines and fluoride. We found that, similar to the anti-vaccination community, a small but vocal and very tightly knit network is likely driving the anti-fluoridation lobby. Highly connected networks such as these develop a strict set of social norms and values, and any person or piece of evidence in violation of those norms, such as scientifically accurate pro-fluoride information, will be quickly rejected, making rational scientific discourse nearly impossible. Members of the anti-fluoride networks frequently shared and cited scientific studies to back their arguments. However, in more than two-thirds of conversations, the actual study cited was buried two or three links away from the online discussion or was not reachable at all. Under these circumstances, the risk of evidence becoming misrepresented or misinterpreted likely increases with each link that takes readers further away from the original article. Why? The answer is influencers. Influencers are members of online social networks who are most important in driving conversations and spreading information widely. Their level of influence is measured by a term called betweenness centrality, or the number of ties they have between many different clusters or communities. Social media users with the highest between the centrality often have the most directive over what is being said and how. As conversations are taken further away from the original source and less likely to allow members to interpret the sources on their own, they become more influenced by the sentiment of the influencers themselves and less by the accuracy of any science or source. So how can we influence the influencers and make sure our health information is communicated accurately? Our findings with fluoride are beginning to help us understand how to potentially predict and possibly even prevent 
digital pandemics of misinformation through three measures. Number one, betweenness centrality. How much influence does an online community member have? And are people of high influence saying positive or negative things about a given health topic? Number two, sentiment and engagement. How is particular content engaging members and are the most engaging discussions positive or negative? Number three, spread and source. Is the source regulated or unrestricted? Does it have a big reach? Is it unregulated with wide reach, like BuzzFeed? Or is it regulated with a smaller reach, such as a local newspaper? Is it accountable to authorized professionals? Or is it unrestricted and managed by a single person or entity? We believe the right combination of these measures will create pioneering opportunities to modernize public health communication strategies and combat digital pandemics. The strategies we hope to develop as a result of this research have the potential to shape how all health entities share information and how the public engages with that information so that the voice of expertise, evidence, and experience is the one they trust and share within their networks.